So in this video, we're going to look at uh, Newton's method, uh, the next uh, uh, iterative method used for finding roots of equations. So first, let me give you an idea about where does Newton's method actually come from. So it's interesting that if we, for instance, uh, label some things here, let's say p is a root. P, let's say this is p, which is the actual root of uh, this function. And let us assume that p0 is some initial guess. Now, what Newton's method says is basically if you drop down here, this means the this is the value f at p0, of course. Now, if you were to draw the tangent line to this here, then this tangent would in fact intersect the x-axis at this point, let's call it p1. And in theory, if you think about it, that's a, another guess at the root of this. And if we continue this way further on, for instance, this would be, of course, the value fp1. Now, similarly, we could just as easily uh, draw the tangent line here, and that intersects at this point, which becomes p2. Now, you can start to see a pattern emerging, which is that as we proceed further, come down here, and then draw the tangent line in this case, that comes quite close in fact, so your p3. So what's happening is we are getting closer and closer uh, to the root um, of this equation, uh, or the uh, uh, fx equals zero in other words. That's what we're trying to solve. Now, if we, for a moment, just um, go back to the first situation, p0 and p1, okay? Let's try to go back to p0 and p1. Uh, so. Um, in that situation, and I'll redraw it, one sec now. So here we are back again. So um, if we try to look at uh, this situation, if we try to get the equation of this line, this tangent line, well, uh, this point here is a point on the line and its coordinates are P0 and FP0. So we're back to a very simple algebra and equation of a line, in fact, and we're gonna use the point slope form of the equation of a line, which is Y minus Y1 equals the slope into x minus x1. Now if you think about it, the slope of this line is in fact f dash at p0, okay? It's f dash at p0, that's your slope. Now um, the point is this, so now we're ready to write down y minus in fact fp0 equals, the slope is f dash at p0 into x minus p0. Okay, now if you, let's go to this point here. Now this point here is, its coordinates are P1, 0. So if I substitute this into this um, equation of this tangent line, because it's supposed to be on this line as well, then let's see what relationship occurs. Well, Y is 0, so I'll have negative P0 equals F dash P0 uh, f dash p0 into p1 minus p0. Uh, from this, we can actually get a relationship between p1 and p0, and it turns out that p1, by rearranging the equation, is p0 minus fp0 divided by f dash of p0. So we have a very uh, straightforward um, iteration, in fact, that comes from this, and that is basically we can extend that to say pi plus 1 equals pi minus uh, f pi over f dash pi. And that in fact, that in fact is uh, Newton's method for calculating the roots of an equation. So um, that in a nutshell is how Newton's method works. Um, we've got our iterative process and of course like before, we assume some initial guess p zero. Um, now the convergence criteria for Newton's method is that this initial guess should be reasonably close to the root. I mean it doesn't, it, it means you shouldn't be going very very far from where the root actually is and Newton's method um, is pretty quick to converge. Now it is faster, uh, it is a faster method, however it has its drawbacks and the drawbacks are uh, dependent on the, the derivative actually. There are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. Number one, that um, the method requires that 
not only the function be continuous, fx be continuous, but f dash must also be continuous. So um, on any interval a, b, you require f and f dash both to be continuous. Remember that was not a requirement in the bisection, uh, neither was it in fixed point iteration. They just require the functions to be in fact continuous on the interval of interest. Here, f dash has to be continuous as well because otherwise you can't calculate the derivative, you cannot depend on it. Not only that, but uh, you also have the problem that f dash pi should not be equal to zero because if it's equal to zero, the method will collapse. It will give you uh, infinite, so it will diverge. So that's another restriction of uh, the, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, method. Now, if you think about it, that happens when? When the slope of the tangent line is zero. So in other words, horizontal tangent lines where the slope is zero, that means the derivative is zero. And that in fact indicates, and if you think about it, like, let me just show you it here, for instance, if I force this to have a, there you can see. Now, you can see why that will not work because that will not intersect the x-axis. It logically makes sense. It will not give you another root, in fact. So therefore, that's another. That's this. These are the couple of drawbacks of the of Newton's method. Now, in terms of uh, the uh, division, we can overcome it by, in fact, using a, a, a variation of Newton's method, which is called the secant method. Which um, basically, very quickly, I can show you, um, is quite easy to um, figure out. So, uh, as I said, one of the ways to overcome the derivative is to use the approximation for the derivative, which is, um, let me, sorry, just, so the derivative at f, f p i is in fact f p i minus f p i minus 1 divided by p i minus p i minus 1. So, that is the approximation of the derivative. We'll just leave the limit aside, but that's really what the derivative is, isn't it? It's the change in the output divided by the change in the input, or the change in the function divided by the change in the independent variable. So, um, so uh, by using this um, approximation of the derivative, we end up with the revised, uh, another different iteration method, and this is called the secant method. So let's do a quick example of, um, we'll do some examples of, uh, let's do an example of Newton's method. So let's do an example of Newton's method here quickly. So um, let's try to solve the equation cosine x minus x equals zero. So this is our function f of x. So f dash of x equals minus sine x minus sine x minus 1. So therefore, the iterations are pi uh, minus what we have over here on the, on the top is, of course, um, now we're doing Newton's method, remember. So it's going to be cos pi minus pi all divided by Minus sine and minus sine and pi, so that'll become plus, and this will be sine pi plus one. So hopefully you see that this is all negative, so that's why the sine here will be plus. So now if we use an initial guess, uh, um, that will give us will give us p1 equals 1 plus cosine 1 minus 1 over sine 1 plus 1. So p1 gets to be that. p2, uh, as we work it out, turns out to be 0.739. You can see it converges very quickly uh, to this um, root of the equation. So that's basically how the how Newton's method would work in this case. And if we were to do the same problem using the secant method, uh, let's do that over here. Here you have to be careful because you will notice that there are this pi plus one, pi, and pi minus one. So the first type of iteration we've come across where we have um, three iterates uh, in parallel running in parallel. One is the new one, 
So that will be P2. So we'll when I is equal to 1 in this case, uh, then you'll have P2 equals P1 minus F of P1, and then you'll have uh, P1 minus P0, and that will be divided by F at P1 minus F at P0. Now, I have to be careful. This means you need two initial starts. So we will assume, for instance, P0 is equal to 1 for the sake of argument, and P1 is equal to, um, or P0 is equal to 0 and P1 equal to 1. Now remember, these two can't be the same because if they are, that will make the entire thing 0. You could try to start with it, but it's dangerous if um, they're both um, equal to 0. Because uh, if they're both the same, then these two values will be the same and that'll cause a, a division over 0 problem, which uh, the denominator will become 0. Now this is one of the drawbacks of the secant method, by the way, is that one has to be careful to have in their algorithm a um, the tolerance would have to stop. Uh, stopping criterion is extremely important. You cannot let this run because as you hone in or get close to the root, P0 and P1, for instance, or PI and PI minus 1 will get very close to each other, which means F at the two values will get very close and therefore a tendency to become zero, in fact. In any case, here are some uh, values. Uh, so P2 would be, for instance, so here are a few values, just a few corrections here. That's 133 in the end, not 113. Please uh, note that. But anyway, here you will notice that um, P6, in fact, is when we get the 133 and then it will stabilize. Um, it's uh, reached this um, the root. Now the problem is this would mean that P7 and P6 would be very close and the ninth decimal place in fact they are equal which means that it will lead to a division by zero issue and if not here even if you allow for more accuracy it will eventually happen. Therefore it, uh, the secant methods requires that uh, the tolerance check on each of the iterates be strictly followed Otherwise, uh, it basically means that the root has been achieved. So we just need to be more careful as there is a, an extra uh, issue that can occur once the root, it has converged to the root. So anyway, you can all, obviously one of the things you can, will notice is that Newton's method is still a little faster than Seekin's method. All right, uh, so these two methods are basically versions of each other. And uh, as you can see, Seekin method has some advantages and of course it has its disadvantages as well. I'll stop here.